Hey there, long time no see. <laughs> so a uh, long, long time ago, I put together a beginner's guide to Zato One, which is still on the channel, and I still think it's a fantastic place to start if you're completely new to Zato and don't know what you're doing or new to fighting against him and don't know what he's doing. But I wanted to make an updated advanced guide to help people on both ends of the matchup improve with the character and become much more consistent. So if you're a Zato player who hit a plateau and just don't know what to do to improve past where you are, or if you're fighting against good ones and you just have no clue what's going on, like you thought you knew how to fight them, but it's like, I don't know how to interact with this character. If you feel that way, this video is hopefully going to help you out as well. So I have a set of topics here that I really want to cover, and probably the first half of them, the first half of the video is going to be for everyone. They're going to be for the Zotto players and the people fighting against Zotto. So stick around no matter who you are. And over time, they might become a little bit more Zotto specific. I will eventually go into a really important combo that lets him spend a little bit of meter to get a really good mid-screen knockdown and a little bit more damage off of his most common hits like 5p and 2p. I know combos aren't really what the defending player cares about, so I don't want to focus on them too much, but we are going to cover a lot of topics here. So we're going to cover what you can do after um, Pierce happens, so you can actually challenge Pierce successfully as a defending player, and what you can do on offense as a Zotto player to kind of mitigate these defensive options, right? So, so we're going to cover the rock, paper, scissors situation from both ends, and we're going to cover Zotto's mix-up options like his standard high-low mix-up, how you can maybe lower your risk on defense a little more, how you can set up your offense better as a Zotto player, and also some of his trickier, um, I'm, again, I can't cover every mix up he has because people are finding new stuff all the time. There's no way to cover everything with a character like this, but we can cover some of his more common interesting options. And for the defending player, it's good to understand what kind of mix ups you're gonna be up against. Even if it's a 50-50, you still gotta know what your options are, whether it's a high-low mix up, a left-right mix up. If you don't know, then you can't guess. And if you aren't guessing at all, then the 50-50 just turns into getting hit 100% of the time. And then eventually we're gonna move on to wall slump situations. We're gonna move on to how to manage Eddie on offense in combos so you can keep getting resets. And we'll do a little more than what I mentioned here. I'm sure I've forgotten something. So we got plenty in store, stick around. The very first thing I wanna cover is Pierce this move with Eddie, right? So when you release the punch button and Eddie's out, or you just do quarter circle forward punch, which gives you Pierce. This is probably the most important situation to understand if you want to improve as Zotto or against him. This is where I see the most people kind of get hung up. If you autopilot in this situation on either end of the matchup, you're in for a bad time. So what's really important to understand is that Pierce has a gap between the two hits. He does punch, punch. Between those two hits, there is a five frame gap. So one, two, three, four, five. And then on the sixth frame, that's when the second punch makes contact. So if you just chill out and let the Pierce happen, that's gonna give Zotto enough time to run all the way up to you and go for a mix up, you know, whatever that is, or take the time to get some corner carry and set up a really clean high low mix up or something like that. And obviously the defending player wants to avoid this. So what can they do to deal with this a little bit better? All you have to do is hit a five frame mashing button and now you're gonna be able to hit Pierce between the two hits. Depending on spacing, depending on whether you mistime it, there is a chance that you're gonna trade with Eddie. It's pretty uncommon, but once in a while it does happen, like right there. But even if it does happen where you trade with Eddie and you take like, what, like 10 damage, who gives a crap? You know, you're full screen, you're out of the situation, Eddie is dead, now it's your turn to run in on Zotto and try to get something started. So the layer one of the situation is if Zotto lets the Pierce rock and the other person blocks, he gets a really good offense off of it. But the other player can mash with a five frame button. So you gotta know your character's frame data. Usually this is gonna be a standing punch or a crouching punch. So that'd be a 5P or a 2P. Depending on your character, it could be different. So Bridget's crouching kick or 2K is gonna be your five frame button. Axel's five frame button, I believe is his 2K as well. You just gotta know what your character's option is. All right, so what does Zotto do to deal with the punch? The simplest thing is to cancel into drills. So while Eddie's doing something, you can always cancel into other Eddie moves if you manually input the quarter circle forward motion yourself. So you can do drills and cancel into a pose and cancel into frog. This is really important to understand as auto. You can cancel Eddie into other stuff manually before they're finished. So you cancel the first hit of Pierce into drills, and now you're gonna outspace their button. So if you're really far away, they're probably gonna block the drills because they're not gonna reach them in time. If you're at a little closer spacing, you're probably gonna actually whiff punish the button and get a combo. It can be a little awkward to combo from this because you kind of gotta time your move right as the last drill is ending. 
So it can take a little bit of practice. No one gets it 100% of the time, don't worry about it. But the main point is that you're gonna get your turn. Even if you don't actually even take the combo, now you got a knockdown off of it, you got a corner carry, you still have Eddie following you, you can do stuff. If you're really close, you don't have to play this mind game, you can just fill the gap perfectly with your own button. But you're usually not gonna use Pierce point blank to do this, so it doesn't really, it doesn't really come up that often. All right, now what can the defending player do? Well, because the drills take a little while to get there, you can usually just kind of back off. It gives you kind of a chance to back away. It really is as simple as you get to get away. Usually when you escape and Eddie's already wasted a lot of his gauge, Zato's probably gonna unsummon him or use the rest of his gauge to lock you down and now there's not much of a mix up set up anymore. Like let's say I got away and then I blocked the frog after. It's kind of hard to see because the buttons are in the way. Let me get rid of those really quick. Let's maybe move those to the top of the screen. You can see that like, there just really isn't any eddy gauge left to work with. So even if I were to get hit by like a dust here or like a high low mix up, there's no way for Zotto to confirm off of it anymore. So just escaping the drill situation puts you in a much better risk versus reward situation as a defending player. So usually he's just gonna unsummon at this point anyway. So on both sides, you're kind of just supposed to be creative. So what do you do after the pierce? Do you mash? Do you block? Do you back off? What does Zotto do after the pierce? Does he let the pierce rock? Does he cancel and do another move? Or you can even do stuff like Drunkard Shade Eddie behind the opponent. Because when you uh, Drunkard Shade Eddie, he's actually invincible while he's sliding forward until he gets to the end. So you're going to actually juke the opponent here. They Eddie can't get hit. And then maybe you can set up like, you know, whatever mix up you want to do in that sandwich situation, right? So. Sandwich pressure is kind of its own video at some point, but it's a good thing to learn how to do. And a lot of dealing with Pierce is gonna be context specific for both sides of the matchup. So if we're really close, again, canceling into drills isn't gonna do anything because if Eddie is this close, their mashing button is gonna reach him anyway. The reason we cancel into drills is because if we're farther away, you kind of see instead of Pierce continuing to slide Eddie forward. So normally when you summon Pierce, Eddie's gonna keep sliding forward the whole time. But if you cancel into drills, he's gonna stop. He's gonna stop in his tracks and he's gonna outspace the other person's move. So that's why we do it. But if we're really close, that's not gonna be an option. But if we're really close, we can use our own button to like fill that gap, right? And even if we don't get there in time, something like a 5H is gonna catch the other person mashing their button. But you don't get a combo, you don't, you know, actually get anything meaningful off it. This knockdown is really not very good. You don't really get a good meaty. And now Eddie's out of the equation because they did hit Eddie before we hit them. So this kind of thing is really nice, but it's not as nice when they have a lot of health. Because it's like, oh, they just traded a little bit of health to get out of the situation, which is probably fine on their end. They really shouldn't be too upset about that. All right, I don't want to be stuck on the pure situation for too long, but you should lab it. You should practice it. Try it out in training mode. Don't just practice it in matches because it's really annoying to do for the first time in matches on either side. You really should practice your options ahead of time. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the 50-50 high-low mix-up that Zotto has. I'm not just talking about running up and doing dust, although that is very strong like dust is very good if someone can't deal with it well or react to it or hasn't practiced reacting to it they're gonna have a hard time so i mean definitely do it this is the most layer one thing you're gonna do on offense but what about a real 50 50 if someone's dealing with dust really well so that's gonna look pretty much like this where you land and go low with like a 2k or right before you land you're gonna hit a jump dust this keeps you in the air a little bit longer and it gives you a delayed high. So you're gonna do empty low or you're gonna do delayed overhead. That's the basic 50-50. And this is gonna be pretty much any time you can get them to be locked down with drills where you're pretty close at the start. So even mid screen, you're gonna get a decent combo from this. So let's say we get a hard knockdown with 2K 2D. Anything in the sweep, you're gonna be able to set this kind of thing up. And, you know, in the corner, if you get a throw, you can just go right into drills and bam, you can do it too. You could even OTG off the ground. So like maybe get one extra hit with like a 5H or a close slash or something and then do it. And that's a 50-50. The defending player pretty much has three options. I know I said it's a 50-50, but they can block high, they can block low, or they can use some of their resources to challenge. So that's going to be either a yellow Roman cancel, a YRC, or a burst. 
All right, so I recorded the high-low mix up here. I just went high. If you're gonna use your resources here, you wanna time it at the point of the high-low. That way he's gonna have to commit to a move if he wants to open you up. So if you have a burst, you can do that. I wouldn't really recommend wasting a burst on this because if you get it baited, now you're down a burst and you're probably gonna die. But YRC is very strong in this situation. And if you show this as an option, now the Zotto player is forced to actually bait the YRC. And if he baits the YRC and they don't know how to set it up very well, that's just them jumping and committing to nothing and just being in throw range. So now there's this whole scramble of like, well, now they're right next to me and maybe I just mash throw, you know? There's things Otto can do to kind of get around this. Like he can fill the gap with Pierce as he's landing. You can let go of the punch button to keep it as a true block string a little bit longer. So I can't just mash throw right away. And he'll still block the YRC. So like that's that's the most simple thing he's gonna do, but now he gave up his mix up in order to do that. He gave up his high low in order to bait the YRC. So for the defending player, it's block high, block low, or challenge with a YRC or a burst, which turns it from a 50-50, so it's a coin flip, heads or tails, into a rock, paper, scissors situation, which is noticeably better. Obviously, you're not going to have meter all the time to YRC. You're not always going to have a burst. And even if you did have a burst, you might want to save it till after you got hit instead of as a guess beforehand. But my point is just that, hey, you have options here. Now, for the uh, Zotto player, I think you're probably going to want to go high slightly more often than low. And the reason for that is just that off the overhead, off the overhead, you're going to be able to get a second high low. So because it's an airborne move, you can flight cancel. So you can cancel into flight, jump kick, or you can just go low with a 2K as soon as you land. So the overhead is good because it's a high-low 50-50, and then it's a second high-low 50-50 right afterwards, which is obviously, you know, two mix-ups are better than one. So for the defending player, I'd probably block high slightly more than you're blocking low. But again, it's still a guess. If you got put in this situation, that sucks. But, you know, that's the nature of the game. Wind conditions are very strong in Guilty Gear Strive. But any little thing you can do to mitigate your risk is uh, is going to come a long way. By the way, for the Zotto player, if you're going to do this mix-up, um, the easiest way to auto-time this is to do a rising jump punch, and then right before you land, you can hit your jump D. This is going to give you the lowest to the ground possible jump dust. And it's pretty consistent. Once you learn this, it's really easy to do. Manually timing the jump dust if you don't do this can be kind of hard, because if you're too early, you're going to whiff above a croucher. So, you know, it's you're trying to do an overhead, but if someone blocks low and you mess up, now they can punish you with the throw or something like that. So being sure that you can actually get it as close to the ground as possible is gonna help you out a lot. However, if the other person has 50 meter and YRC available, then you actually don't wanna do this rising punch because that can get YRC'd. That's like a guaranteed spot for them to YRC if they have the meter. So if they have the meter, you're kind of stuck manually timing it because otherwise they can just react to you whiffing the jump punch and then YRC that. And I think this kind of leads me into the next thing I want to talk about is just that the defending player, again, has to use YRC once in a while, and it's going to be at the timing of you going for your high-low mix-up. So even if you aren't going to do the actual 50-50 and you're just going to do like run-up dust, when the high-low of you running all the way up would occur, that's the time that the other person wants to YRC. And if you want to actually bait that, you're going to have to run up to them and just block. But again, this is kind of a weird scramble. And a lot of the times when you do this, you're going to be close enough where if they just didn't YRC, but they're mashing throw, they're going to throw you now, which is not fun. You don't want to get back thrown into the corner and lose the whole round because you, you know, you baited something out and the other person just happened to be mashing throw instead. So something I would highly recommend learning is to run up and then use a pierce right as you run up. You'll notice that I can set the opponent to guard only the first hit, which means if there's a gap in my offense, they'll get hit. So true block string, not a true block string. So this is gonna show us that we can actually get one hit of Pierce off as a true block string after drills, which means now if we were to bait YRC mid screen and we let this Pierce happen, now the Pierce is gonna fill the gap and I'm not gonna be at risk of actually getting thrown. All right, so I have this recording of him doing that. It's a true block string into Pierce. There's gonna be a gap after the first Pierce, but that's not the point here. If someone were to YRC, they're gonna to wanna to do it at the spot where they're gonna to have to worry about overhead, like a dust. So running my offense this way is gonna let Zotto block the YRC and keep me safe from throw. 
So this is really important. So as a defending player, if you think the Zado thinks you're gonna YRC, mashing throw is still pretty good because a lot of Zados don't actually bait things out this way. And if you can tell that they are doing this, then now you know, okay, I'll stop mashing throw as a call out to them calling out my YRC. By the way, if you do bait YRC at any point, you do get a really good combo. You can get a, uh, a 5H starter. And 5H is really good. I don't want to go into combos too much because, you know, you can look those up, you can learn those on your own time. I don't want to focus on them too much, but you really do get a lot. So if you bait out the YRC, you are in a really good position. You just get, you know, you get so much damage off this. Usually the wall is going to break before then because if they're, you know, if you have your offense going that good, you probably already hit them once, so the wall is going to break sooner. But you know what I'm getting at. My point being, you get a good punish off baiting YRC, so it's really important to do it, not just because you have to sometimes, but also just because if you do, you probably won the round. So Zotto has changed a bit since the last video I made, which was too long ago. <laughs> there is one really big change that happened since that last video and it affects Eddie's gauge. So if you look at his gauge at the bottom, you'll see if we do drills and then we do, you know, like one more set of drills by release and kick, that's going to be all of our juice. So drills into drills, that's all of it because drills use up 50% of your gauge, 50 plus 50, 100, that's the whole thing, right? So two drills or two frogs is going to be your whole gauge every single time. But if you know what you're doing, you can actually make the moves cost a little less and let you do three of them instead of just two. So how does that work? So Eddie's moves are gonna cost the full price every time if you just summon him directly into the move, that'll cost the full 50%, or if he's already out and you negative edge the move, which is you know positive edge is pushing the button, negative edge is releasing the button. So if I release the button, that's gonna cost 50%. So I'll summon him, release kick, that's 50% of his gauge at the bottom of the screen right there. The exception to this is if Eddie is already out and you manually input the move, it's gonna cost a little bit less. So let's raw summon and then as Zotto, we're gonna clap our hands and do the drills. It's gonna cost a little bit less. And this little bit makes a really, really big difference. Most commonly, the situation is gonna come up when you get a hard knockdown, such as if you were to end a combo in sweep. So if we end a combo in sweep, we have enough time to summon Eddie and then manually input a move with Zotto and then take our turn. So now what's really cool about this is like, let's say we confirm our dust into frog. Usually we'd be out of juice, but not anymore. And if we do this, we're gonna have enough juice left over to get a combo, unsummon, keep the corner and resummon, which is really good. Eddie gets his gauge back so fast that if you can just really quickly unsummon in a combo and then resummon with drills, you're gonna be able to get another mix up or two. So anytime you get a hard knockdown, you're gonna be able to summon Eddie and manually input the move, and that's gonna give you a lot more gauge available, which is just really, really nice. That little bit makes a big difference. That's the difference between getting one mix up or two mix ups in your offense. That's the difference between the mix up that you do hit them with using the rest of your Eddie gauge and forcing you to break the wall and not have Eddie anymore, or being able to unsummon Eddie mid combo and get him back. And I don't wanna talk about combos too much because I think this is something you can look up. This is something you can find, you know, the Guilty Gear Strive Zato hashtag on Twitter, and you can just find all sorts of setups. You can find combos, mix-ups, these kinds of things. You can just find all the tech in the world. I'm not here to share tech. I wanna, I wanna help you guys find the puzzle pieces that you're missing to improve, and you can look up all the combos you want later. But I do wanna make the point that being able to do something like this where you can unsummon mid combo and then resummon afterwards with a setup is usually the result of you managing your eddy meter really well so that you can do that most of the time it's going to look like hey i got the hit let me combo into 2h and then unsummon and then let's do drills again right afterwards but all those really cool combos where you unsummon and resummon most of the time those aren't possible if you aren't managing your Eddie gauge well first. But this kind of takes me into the next topic of what do you do when Eddie runs out, but you're still on offense? So let's say the very last bit of Eddie meter you have is used for the mix-up. And now we don't have enough gauge left to unsummon. What do we want to do? The answer is we want to combo into Sun Void any time we can. I was too late there. Typically, Sun Void is, is your best friend. If you have 50 meters, Sun Void is ridiculous. It's so good. Anytime it's guaranteed to either make the opponent block, 
break the wall or combo in any way, you're going to be able to get a good mix up because Eddie is going to land wherever the sword lands. So you want to do Sun Void and then start holding kick and then you can immediately release it and bam. So anytime you do this and you're, you know, guaranteed to make them block Sun Void, like let's say, let's say you gold burst the opponent, you can just go right into Sun Void and they're going to have to block it. If you're too late, they're gonna be able to jump away though. So let's set the opponent to counter attack with a jump. So after recovery, let's set them to jump. And if you do this as fast as possible, they're gonna block in the air and you're still gonna get your turn. But if you do this a little too late, like that seemed a little late to me, they're gonna get out of the situation. They're gonna be able to hit Eddie on the way down or they're gonna maneuver around in the air. Maybe they'll air dash and jump on you. And if you block, Eddie's gone and you just spend all this meter for nothing. So you wanna make sure you get that on time. There are gonna be times when you don't actually have enough meter to combo directly into the sun void, but you might still be able to do something with it if you wanna meaty with it instead. So instead of actually comboing into it, you just meaty with the sun void just like that and that'll work out great. And usually this is just gonna come from any time when you don't have enough meter during the combo to combo into it, but the very last hit that gives you the knockdown gives you the meter like right there. And then you can get your offense from it. One of the buffs that Zotto got along the way is that they made Sun Void a lot faster. It's not fast enough where I would ever consider just using it in neutral, it's not good for that. They can always, they can almost always just jump over it. But it is fast enough now, and this is kind of silly, but it is fast enough now where it is very difficult to get away from it if you cancel into it from 5H in the corner. So let's say we space out around here and then try to do Sun Void. It's pretty hard for them to get away. So they're not gonna be able to challenge it very well. So I've set the opponent to jump after recovering on block. Can they get away in time? Let's see. No, they can't. They end up blocking it in the air. Most characters don't have a way of actually challenging if you can space this out a little bit. They're gonna end up jumping, blocking in the air. If they try to mash, they're not gonna have something that hits you in time. Let's set them to mash here. So if they do mash and they end up getting hit, it's just gonna hit them, it's gonna break the wall, and then you're gonna get a good setup afterwards. But you can usually, usually what you're gonna see them do after a wall break is you're gonna see them raw summon, hold punch, and then they'll let go of punch so that the pierce comes out. And in order to deal with someone who's mashing, they'll dash up and do a crouch slash. And you can jail with this if you're like pretty good, but it's kind of kind of annoying. Even if you don't jail with it and they mash, you're probably gonna frame trap and get a combo. So like, that's totally good. And even if you don't convert this into a combo when they get hit, you're still gonna be in a position to just like meaty their recovery with drills afterwards and then get a mix up. And because you're in positive bonus after breaking the wall, you're gonna have all this meter to do it again. I wanna really quickly show that there are some ways to get around this depending on your character, but again, yeah, it's gonna be character specific. So so let's set Nago to counterattack with the super. As soon as he's done with block stun, he's gonna super me. Can he challenge this? Probably. Yeah. And in fact, at that like sweet spot, hey, he's gonna get a combo from it, which may or may not be worse than just getting hit by the whole thing. <laughs> So most characters that have an invincible super, if it has any good horizontal range on it at all, is going to be able to stop you from doing this kind of thing. So if they have 50 meter, you probably want to be cautious of that and not autopilot into that to reset your turn. Even some of the farther reversals like Leo's flash kick don't do really well at dealing with this. They don't reach in time before the invincibility runs out, but he might be able to hit you with super instead. So again, if they have 50 meter, you got to be careful. Most commonly in offense, if you're going to use Sun Void, you're going to try to get it off of drills or off of a pose. So like when the oppose swipes down, you can cancel into this and that's going to jail into a true block string and get you your turn started again. And what's nice about this is that even if they have meter to Y or C, it's going to be difficult for them to deal with because let's say, you know, they're blocking drills. You can just backdash out of Y or C range and then do it. So let's just get out of there and then do it. The YRC probably wouldn't reach at that point. And then we get our turn again. A lot of the time you'll see this move get used because like Eddie's been doing a bunch of stuff in neutral for a while and he uses the last little bit of his juice in order to make you block drills. And then you'll, you know, you'll see Zato cancel into Sun Void in order to get his turn going again. He can cancel into drills and then maybe get like one mix up after. There's actually some pretty cool stuff you can do with this too, where instead of filling the gap off the high-low mix with Pierce in order to combo off of it, you can actually fill it with Frog. So this is still gonna jail. You'll still get your high-low mix afterwards where you fly into JK or land and go low. 
Let's set them so that they will get hit low, so we'll set the block switching to disable. This just means that, you know, he's set to stand, so he'll never crouch. It won't, like, swap. So this means he's going to get hit low after the first 50-50. So the second 50-50, he's going to get hit low. And we can get a combo off this. This is pretty good. Like, this didn't used to work consistently. They've sped up Amorphous as well, so that combo is very consistent. But you could also cancel into sword super so you don't have to just do this off drills or after a pose you can also do it off frog when the second hit of frog connects that should jail so let's set them to guard only the first hit so that we can be sure that that's how it's working and that did jail because if there was a gap they would have got hit so what's cool about this is we'll do the high low mix up and then whichever we go, high or low, if we're really fast and cancel into Sword Super, it'll combo on hit and give us instant wall break. It's really hard to burst because it happened right away. You can't burst after the super starts up. They have to have committed to it first and reacting in time to whether they got hit is, is really hard. And if they block it, let's say they're standing and we go high. If they block it, we just get our turn and we can get some more mix up. which is pretty nifty. All right, let's talk about left, right, mix up, mid screen. There's a bunch of ways to set this up. I'm not gonna cover everything because there's just no way to do that. People are finding new ways to set up left, right, mix up all the time. I'm not gonna, you know, make any promises that I'm covering everything, nor am I gonna try. I just wanna give you the basics. But the idea is that you're gonna do pierce at some point, and between the two hits of pierce, you're gonna try to find a way to get over to the other side of the opponent. Usually this is gonna be with break the law, right? So we're gonna break the law and go under them. The second hit will probably cross up for us. This is really easy in sandwich situations where we'll do pierce and break the law under. The reason this is so easy is because if the pierce is pushing them towards us and we're moving that direction too, we're gonna pass each other a little easier than if we're trying to like outpace them. A common way to set up the left right mix up is to just like do drills, run at them and then break the law right before you get to them and pierce at the same time. A lot of people are going to react to this situation and know that they have to block the other way because, you know, break the law kind of has a slow startup. They can see that you're going underground. They'll just instinctively know to block the other way. So I wouldn't say this is a free hit, but if someone shows that they're willing to block the other direction and they're aware of the situation, you could do something like you could pretend to go under and then actually just slide backwards and stay on the same side. And this is actually a really good combo starter if you stay on the same side. But again, if you can get them in a sandwich situation, the left-right mix-up's a little easier to do just because Eddie's pushing them towards us. So it's just a little quicker to slide under. If they're coming here and we're going there, we're gonna pass each other a little quicker. If Zato leaves station A moving five miles an hour and Eddie leaves station B leaving 30 miles an hour, how fast is the cross up? I don't know, I'm lame. Um, <laughs> When it comes to the left-right mix-up, I would say just don't overly rely on it, but it is very good when you get the chance. And when it comes to finding situations where you can do it or setups to do it in, don't try to force it too often. In my experience, the simple stuff is probably the best most of the time. Honestly, dust is really good and you get more mix-up afterwards if you still have more eddy gauge, right? You can still do stuff. The basic high-low 50-50 is a staple for a reason. Throw mix-up is really good. We didn't really talk about it much today, but against characters that have reversals or maybe against a person who is mashing against you a lot of the time, a really good option is to cancel into a pose on offense. So if they were to, let's say, counterattack with a button on block, let's say 5P, then now we can kind of punish it with a throw or we could, you know, punish it with 2K, 2D and get a big combo from that. And let's say they don't do anything there and they just block and maybe they block our mix up. We're still plus in this situation because opposed, you know, the follow up, the snakes is going to, you know, is going to tickle them and make them block for a while and uh, we'll be able to keep our turn. So, and again, this is a really another situation where we can set up Sun Void and reset our turn. All right. I promised I was going to talk about a really important combo and I have not done that yet. So we're gonna talk about the red RC combo that you're gonna use the most. I stand by what I said earlier where I don't think combos are the most important thing to learn, but I do think this combo is super important to learn. Reason being that going from not getting a combo from your punches at all to getting a 
actually really good knockdown is fantastic. That's awesome. So how does this combo work? So what we're gonna do is when we hit the opponent with something, we're gonna red RC forward, probably our punches, let's be honest, 5P, 2P. These buttons are amazing. 5P is amazing, 2P is amazing. Their only bad thing is that they don't get a reward, but with 50 meter, we can solve that problem. So we're gonna red RC forward. You don't have to do this, but it does make it more consistent. If we're really far, there's a chance our red RC is just not gonna reach them. But if we red RC forward, there's a chance we'll move forward enough before the pop happens where it'll actually give us a combo. So it's just a quality of life thing. Also, um, forward RC doesn't pop them up as high as regular RC. So you'll see he goes a bit higher. The screen actually moves upwards before um, the combo's over, where forward, you know, where on a forward RC that doesn't happen. And this height makes it really easy to just do run up 2H and get the height we need for the combo. We're gonna do red RC forward, dash forward 2H. After the 2H, we're gonna raw summon Eddie and not do anything, right? We're just gonna raw summon him and chill out and we're gonna start holding the S button, right? So we're gonna want him to do frog. Here's what's gonna happen if we just do everything we've put together so far. The second hit of the frog doesn't connect. <laughs> and the reason for that is just that frog's weird. <laughs> it doesn't always combo the way you want. It doesn't always give you both hits. Just get used to it. But in this situation, we do have a way to solve that problem. What we're gonna do is when the frog goes up, we're gonna also do a 2S at the same time. So crouching slash, and that'll hold them in place long enough for the second hit of frog to connect. Summon, let frog go, crouch slash. We're good to go. And the last thing we need to do to put it all together is to unsummon after the frog connects. This will give us our meter back right away and give us time to run up and meaty them really well. And you can actually get a little more out of this if you want, an extra 2H and an extra frog and still unsummon and run up. But if you do like too many punches first, it's not gonna work anymore. They'll fall too fast due to the gravity scaling of the combo. But yeah, this is such a huge difference. Okay damage and a really good setup is so much better than just getting like punch, 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 and like nothing, you know, like that's not even comparable. And the more you play and the more you lap, the more situations you'll find that let you do this kind of thing mid combo, which is just, you know, it's just really cool. So you'll, you'll pick up on this more over time. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about is wall slump situations. We've already kind of talked about how if we're able to, and we're in the corner, we probably wanna unsummon so that we don't break the wall too early, right? We wanna wait to break the wall until after we have enough meter to break the wall with Sun Void. Because if we break the wall with Sun Void, we get Eddie back and we get a really good situation afterwards. So before that point, we pretty much just wanna unsummon with 2H and then drill again, and we're usually pretty good. This should give you enough time to block reversals or they'll just miss you altogether depending on spacing. But what about situations where we know the wall is gonna break in like one more hit? So we're not gonna be able to do crouching heavy unsummon in the combo without letting the wall break in the meantime. Well, this is where wall slump situations are gonna come in. You can't always wall slump, but it does come up pretty often. And as long as we've continued the combo in a way where they never left the ground, the wall slump is gonna happen. So moves that are really good for this, the high-low mix-up initially doesn't pick them up off the ground. The JD keeps them on the ground, the 2K hits them on the ground, right? This is all fine. Punches are good. The first hit of Pierce keeps them on the ground. The second hit of Pierce launches them. So we'll see that here. If we ever combo in the second hit of Pierce and it splats them on the wall, that is not a wall stump anymore. If they're off the ground, it's not a wall stump. Trunkard Shade is good. That keeps them on the ground. Basically, you just want your mix up to be converted with these tools. And if you're gonna convert with Pierce, you want a Drunkard Shade before the second hit and then you can pierce again. So the first thing we wanna do if we ever splat them on the wall and we know it's a wall slump, is we want to immediately unsummon Eddie. If we don't do that, then he's probably gonna hit them again and break the wall for us. So we wanna unsummon him right away. And then we wanna time drills to be at the timing that they're gonna recover. So we're gonna unsummon, wait a second, and drill. I think the easy thing to do there is probably backdash drills. 
And I'm just doing this combo beforehand to make sure that the wall is, like, about to pop. Backdash drills, and we're good to go. We can do it again. And the same thing can happen off the low. Unsummon, backdash drills. Unsummon, drills. And eventually, whenever you get to the point where you have meter to break the wall with the super, you're going to unsummon and super instead. And bam, there you go. Usually the reason for the wall slump is that we're not going to have the meter needed to break the wall with a super. So if we can't do that, then we want to keep them in the corner until we can do that. And pretty much the next time you do have the meter to do that, you're going to unsummon and then super and you're good to go. Pretty good damage. We're going to break the wall and we're going to get a setup off it. So I think I covered all the major topics I wanted to for this specific video. I hope it was super helpful regardless of whether you are a Zato player who is trying to become more consistent or you just like learning about other characters or want to fight Zato better. I hope this was able to help you out. There is a lot more to learn with this character, but I wanted to cover the topics that I think were most important to help push as many players into a higher level of um, understanding of the character than before. So hopefully this was helpful and hopefully you have the tools now that the next time you see your favorite Zotto player do something in a match that you're like, wow, that was really cool. Now you hopefully know why they did it and have the tools needed to go into training mode and try it yourself. Thank you for being very patient waiting for this video. I have had a lot of messages over the last year and a half about whether the advanced Zotto guide is ever gonna come out. So <laughs> thanks for waiting. No promises that I will upload again anytime soon, but I will upload again someday. And if you want to be around for when that happens, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon or whatever it is you people do to, you know, <laughs> whatever it is you want to do to stay informed. You can follow me on Twitter or whatever. Uh, <laughs> feel free to do that. Go right ahead. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video whenever that is. Thank you.